Welcome to the service of Holy Communion during the season of Lent. A time for prayer, time for abstaining, a time for reflection. So pleased you could join us. Welcome. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken, promises that burn within my heart. With a doubting heart I follow The paths of earthly wisdom Forgive me for my unbelief Renew the fire again Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy Collect for the first Sunday in Lent. O Lord, who for our sake did fast forty days and forty nights, give us the grace to use such abstinence, that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honour and glory, who livest and reigneth with thee, the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And our first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. The Covenant of Circumcision When Abraham was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you, and will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants, after you, for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus predicts his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciple, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For as long as I can remember, I've known my Christian name. But to many others, I am known by all kinds of names. Mother, Mummy, Grandma, Reverend, Rector, Rural Dean, and so on. Each comes with responsibility and some level of authority. So much importance in a name, in what we are called, in what we are meant to be called. I wonder by how many different names you are known by. Our reading from Genesis today shares a story of the importance of naming. In this passage, God makes a covenant with Abraham and Sarai, a covenant that makes them the parents of a multitude of nations, a covenant that binds them together with God and in God's care, a covenant that makes the relationship with God and God's people permanent and lasting. Again, responsibility and a level of authority. As a symbol of this covenant, God gives Abraham and Sarai new names, Abraham and Sarah, and they have a new path marked out for them. Even in their old age, a child, Isaac, is on the way. A new nation is being born. These new names symbolise the promise God has made with them. New names to mark this new time in their lives, to mark that they are now changed. They aren't the same people now that they have had this encounter with God. They have been given responsibility and authority by God. And our gospel also deals with our identity, although in a less explicit way than the Old Testament lesson. Right here, today's passage in the Gospel of Mark, Peter has identified Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, for the first time. Jesus has been asking Peter, who do people say that I am? In other words, what do they call me? How do they name me? What do I mean to the people? What position do I hold with them? Peter tells Jesus the people's responses vary. Some say he's John the Baptist. Some say he's Elijah. Others, one of the prophets. They all misname Jesus, misidentify who he is and what he's about. But Peter, for once, gets the answer right. 
You are the Messiah, he tells Jesus. Peter's answer shows that he knows who Jesus is. But just as soon as Peter makes his identification, we find ourselves in today's scene where Peter dares to rebuke Jesus for his telling of the suffering, death and resurrection that is to play, take place. Even though Peter got Jesus' name of Messiah right, he doesn't yet seem to understand that name means the title Messiah is not simply a word. It is a title that indicates the path that Jesus must follow. Just as the name Mother, Father, Grandma, Grandad, Christian, Disciple, Priest, they all say something about the role we must play and the path we must follow. They all say something about our responsibility and our level of authority. But Peter does not understand all this, or at least he doesn't want to. He is cross that Jesus is speaking about suffering, rejection and death, and that he will encounter all of this. And it, even the promise of the resurrection is not enough for Peter to accept what Jesus is saying. Peter doesn't seem to respect or understand God's authority, or that the very name Messiah implies something about Jesus' ministry and mission and authority from God, not from Peter. For Jesus, the name of the title of Messiah comes with responsibility. So when Peter cannot see the meaning of his name, which equates to him not accepting his authority, and then dares to argue with Jesus and try to take Jesus down a different road to God's plans, Jesus in turn rebukes Peter, naming him Satan. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus commands. Peter, though, is another figure in scriptures who has been renamed. In fact, he was renamed by Jesus. He was once known as Simon, but now Jesus calls him Peter. And the name Peter carries understanding of responsibility because Peter means rock. And Jesus encouraged Peter to be the rock for the church that would grow after Jesus' time on earth. So Peter has a new name, a new responsibility because of what he knows about Jesus and who he has become as a disciple of Jesus. But here in this hour, Jesus must call Peter, name Peter, Satan. Jesus did not call Peter Satan because he was possessed or because Peter is not in control of himself or what he is saying. Jesus calls Peter Satan because Peter, by his own admission, rejected Jesus and the role that Jesus must play. But also he rejected Jesus' name. And he rejected his own name and the role he is to play. Peter's behaviour as the chosen one of Jesus to be his rock, his behaviour at this moment is not pleasing to Jesus or God. For Peter, the rock, the name, the title comes with responsibility, with his discipleship and the role of leadership comes responsibility. And Jesus says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For us like Peter and also for Jesus himself. With our, with our name comes meaning for who we are to be, what we are to be, and how we are to live. With our names come responsibility. In our lives, our new names, our new titles, simply change who we will be and how we will act. When people get married and make commitments to each other, they sometimes, only sometimes, change their names, but they still signify a new life together and become different. When a person achieves an education or authoritarian goal, just as becoming a doctor, teacher, priest, a new title signifies not just what they have learnt, but a new role which they will serve, 
a new responsibility they have agreed to carry out. And Jesus has names to give us, as does God. We are disciples. We are beloved children. We are Christians. But with these titles, these names, will we bear the responsibility that come with them? We so freely call ourselves Christians, but what responsibility comes with this name? We call ourselves disciples, but what do we do to live up to being a disciple? Jesus tells us, those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What do we do? What do we give to support the privilege of having the name disciple? Do we put our own wants and needs and life aside to serve God and the church? Jesus also outlines for us the cost of being a true Christian, the responsibility that comes with the name we choose to bear in the way we behave, the words we speak and the actions we take. And he also outlines that sometimes that will bring us persecution, vilification and wounding for doing the right thing, for taking the responsibility for doing the right thing and for recognising that we are answerable to the highest authority, God in heaven, than others or ourselves. For Peter, the weight of responsibility of his name seemed too much to bear. Was he ready to accept all that came with his name? Could he be the rock of the new church? Could he carry out Jesus' work once Jesus was no longer present on earth? Do we? Sometimes Peter faltered under these pressures, a feeling I think we can all relate to. Of course we all wobble from time to time. But God, thank God, does not leave us hopeless. God didn't call Jesus to the path of death and resurrection and then abandon him. God named Christ the Beloved and acted with love toward him. Jesus did not call Peter the Rock and then abandon him. Jesus equipped Peter for his ministry. And so God does not name us disciples, children, precious ones, and then abandon us. There is a lovely text in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, just one verse. And it says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. God names us as his own his precious children. We are entering Lent now, when we have time to reflect on our behaviour, but also from today's readings reflect on God's support and forgiveness for us when we don't get it right, but more importantly, to reflect on the title Christian, the title Disciple, the title God's Beloved Children, because with that comes responsibility. The greatest commandment and the greatest commission for starters. But with, with our name too comes a promise from God to be with us, to be our God, to walk beside us. So we needn't be afraid to be bold and do God's work here in our villages. Like the agreement God made with Abraham when he received his new name, God makes a promise with us that when we receive the name Disciple, he will support us when we seek to serve him and take up our cross and follow Jesus. So we need not be afraid to take on challenges, to say who we are, and to take on the responsibility of the title that we like to use. By what name are you known? Mother, father, friend, aunt, brother, daughter, son. But are you also known as a teacher, a healer? Or are you first and foremost known as a disciple, a Christian, a child of God? During your Lenten times of quiet, 
prayer and reflection. Remember your responsibility as a Christian. Remember the authority God gives to you by always remaining with you and supporting you through the mission and ministry he wants you to do. God calls us and names us. And then he says this, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Amen. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to our God in faith, knowing that he understands what is best for us. Heavenly Father, increase our faith that everyone in your church may be more ready to trust you and move forward with you wherever you lead us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, give to all leaders and their advisers the courage to be honest, the will to be just, the greatness to be humble, and the openness to learn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, at the door of each home, place your welcome. In the rooms of each home, place your love. In the eyes of each person, place your truth. And in all our companionship, your own. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, Give comfort and healing to those who are unwell, peace to those who are anxious, and reassurance to those who are afraid. May we know your love for us throughout both the good and the agonising times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, May the dying be prepared to meet you, and the souls of those who have died in faith live forever in the joy of your presence. Give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy, knowing that you are always there beside us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we exchange the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I offer you all a sign of peace. God bless you. Peace be with you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let
Wise and gracious God, we spread a table before you. Come nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of peace. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Through fasting and prayer and acts of worship, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others. And the radiant splendour of love as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast. With joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with the saints and angels ever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Savior of the world. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one thing. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us. This is Jesus, the Lord who went before us to show us the way of forgiveness and love. Let us receive him now with joy, for he is our strength. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to you, O Lord Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, for your own sake. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you throughout this season of Lent and evermore. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal us by his wounds. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Master.